Hey everyone, good morning, good afternoon. I'm actually here in uh, the United States of America. I'm in a uh, two-week speaking tour uh, around the United States about Israel and about the IDF and of course about standing together. Um, we're certainly looking for partners and people to join us in our uh, support of IDF soldiers. Um, and I just finished a show on uh, Israel News Talk Radio. For those of you who are not uh, on the site, definitely go on it to Israel News Talk Radio. Um, dot, dot com, and I have my shows that I've, I do weekly. And I have to tell you, last night, although I'm in the United States of America, I have my phone, my WhatsApp here, and of course I am connected up to the um, security of uh, the area uh, in Gush Etzion, and last night it was buzzing nonstop, and obviously I didn't get much sleep. Um, the reports were coming in, and of course the pictures were coming in, and the pictures were coming in long before the press had the pictures, and all that could be all I could think about was shot back to the terrible Itamar um, incident where the Fogel family was slaughtered in their, in their, in their house. And an Islamic Muslim terrorist, the radical Muslim terrorist, broke, breaks into a Jewish home in, in the city of Hebron and stabs mm -hmm. a young girl at the age of 13 um, over 30 times, from what I understand, while she, while she sleeps. Now, I don't know if anyone listening to this has the possibility to fathom the idea of their children or their brothers or their sisters even have the ability to stab anyone. And if they have the ability to stab anyone, to stab anyone in their sleep, and you have the ability to stab anyone in your sleep, to stab them 30 times, I mean, it, it's... I don't understand even how to begin to get these people. Um, and that's the reason I can't begin to get these people is because this is not a... This is not a murderer. It's not someone who's, you know, or even a serial... It's not a serial murderer. These actions are based on an Islam, on a on a religious belief. Now that doesn't mean that Muslim Islam believes this. It doesn't. I, I, people know that on my Facebook, I have several uh, acquaintances and friends who are Muslim who are anti these people more than most Israelis. I would even say, but it, th these actions are based on a religious belief, and anybody who's denying that is part of the problem. Uh, we saw it in the United States of America in Orlando. Uh, it's gun control and homophobia and all kinds of other. Words which exist, by the way, and there, there are problems of, of this stuff in America. This was an Islamic terrorist act. And to define it as anything else is actually, um, you're simply running away from the problem. Uh, so this, this ter horrific terrorist act, and again, I'm still, I wouldn't say sh shaken up by it, but in utter disgust and shock. And I have to tell you that I was, my, my you know, I was, I had a problem being here. I'm sitting here in the United States of America on a speaking tour. And I had a problem being here, uh, getting the reports coming in um, on my phone from the guys in my, the guys in my uh, first alert team in my area, listening to them, listening to the reports, reading the reports, and, and sitting here and just twiddling my thumbs. Again, I wouldn't be able to do anything there either, but I, I don't know. It just, you know, it bothered me that I'm here while this is happening. And of course, I'm trying to do some good things here and speaking around, but it, it really did bother me. And um, I, I want to talk about a couple of things that are on my mind, and I, and I, and I just... I don't know, is the world going crazy? Maybe I'm nuts. I don't mind. You tell me I'm crazy. I, I don't mind. Israel signs a, a deal with, with Turkey over the Fatila that, that came in in 2010. We pay them $21 million. Or well, we don't have people in Israel who are sick and the, and the, and the medical uh, insurance is not covering them. We have extra money to give away to, to enemies. We have extra money to give away to people who are sending ships over to Gaza with weapons on them. Soldiers go on, go on a, the Fatila... And, and get get attacked and hacked almost to death. Soldier, one of the soldiers will get their eyes gorged out by by radical Islamic terrorists who are masquerading as human rights activists, and we pay them twenty one million dollars. And repercussions? What, what? What? We owe them something? I mean, I, listen, Bibi Netanyahu, Bibi Netanyahu is, is a tremendous statesman, and out of the people in Israel right now, he's definitely the best of the um, of the choices here. But what are you thinking? What are all these Turks? What are they giving us? What is it that we get in return for $21 million? Do we have extra money? I, I, I really, I'm saddened by this. I don't understand what, what Netanyahu was thinking. I wish I did. I'm sure there are things up there that I don't see, you know, he sees, sees things from there that I don't see from here. But that excuse is not going to go anymore. I, I, $21 million to a country that sent a boat to terrorize Jews? What is going on here? I, I just simply don't understand. Don't feel guilty about being in the U.S. You're raising funds for a great cause. That is true. It's just, you know, I don't know what to tell you. 
And what is this deal? Understand this deal. It's not just money. It's admission. It's admission of some kind of guilt that we have, for God's sake. When is this going to stop? When are we going to stop feeling guilty for doing nothing? Feeling guilty for fighting back? Feeling guilty for not, not willing to sit back and just be the victim over and over? For God's sake, do we have to go into another march into gas chambers again or just be shot down or stabbed in our sleep 30 times so we can say we're not apologizing anymore? I, I just don't understand it. I, I, I'm so frustrated. And not of the world. Forget the world. I don't care what BBC and Sky and the New York Times has to say. Or the UN. We know where they stand. I don't, I don't care about them. Our own. Our own. The same people in the world. The people understand Israel is a beacon of light in the crazy dark Middle East. Where Israel is such a crazy democracy that a woman like Hanin Zuabi, who's a radical Islamic terrorist apologetic, is on the flotilla years ago saw the weapons and lied about it to the rest of the world, and then gets up now that Israel's trying to patch some relationship with, with Turkey, and gets up in the Israeli parliament and calls IDF soldiers terrorists and murderers? I mean, for God's sake, don't we understand that freedom of speech does not take over my freedom of living? You can't scream fire in a theater, but a woman can get up in the Israeli, the Israeli Knesset and call soldiers murderers when they're only, almost beaten to death on the... On, on the on the flotilla? What is wrong with us? What is wrong with us people? And it gets worse because the deal with Turkey, Israel agreed to, to loosen up the blockade on Gaza. Do you know that during this blockade, when the whole world was talking about the blockade, do you know that three malls were opened up in Gaza? Do you know that two five-star hotels were opened up in Gaza and a water park? And people have the audacity to call this a ghetto? Did the Jews have a water park in the ghetto? Did they have a five-star hotel for God's sake? How deep can the lies go? And why, are, why is the Western world buying this stuff? Do they really not know the truth? I simply don't understand. I don't understand it. Zohar should be kicked out of the Knesset. It, it, shouldn't, it, shouldn't even, it, it shouldn't have waited for this at all. She should be kicked out of the Knesset. She, shouldn't even be, she said that she doesn't want Israel as a Jewish democratic state. It's illegal for her to be in the Knesset. But again, the libertarian idea of allowing people to do what they want and protecting their freedom of, of, I don't know what you want to call it, over my freedom of living is exactly what the same thing's happening in the States, the same thing's happening in Europe. And one's calling a blind eye that there's no problem with radical Islamic refugees. No, no problem at all. Well, come on, people. And then there are those, and I read it, and I'm not even talking... I'm not even talking about, again, I'm not talking about the world. I read on the Israeli, on the Israeli uh, sites here. You shouldn't be in Hebron. Jews shouldn't be in Hebron. What are you living there for? Are you kidding with me? A girl gets slaughtered in her sleep and the Jews shouldn't be living in Hebron? That's your answer? A girl gets slaughtered, stabbed 30 times as she sleeps in her bed and your answer is Jews shouldn't be living in Hebron? If that is not the apex of, of immorality, I don't know what is. You think this is about land? You think this is about Hebron? Or Jerusalem? Or the West Bank? Or the Gaza Strip? Really? Well, okay. 1948 through 1967, all that land was in Arab control. The entire Jerusalem, not half, not east. The entire Jerusalem was in Arab control. Was there peace? I don't think so. And the, and the I don't want to say funny, the frustrating thing is, the frustrating thing is, is in 1929 in the exact same town, in Hebron, not one girl was slaughtered in her sleep. The, Arab, the, the Muslim population in Hebron slaughtered the entire Jewish population and kicked the rest out. In 1929, was that because of settlements? Was that because of occupation? Was it because they wanted Jerusalem? Which was, which, what, <laughs> it, was, it was British. What was the reason back then? What was the reason in 1942, when the Mufti, the Islamic religious leader, met with Hitler to say, come on over to my area and take care of the Jews as well here. 1942, was that because of settlements? Was that because of occupation? I, I don't understand. It's, it's the world losing their mind. It's like, it's, it's unbelievable. And we're apologizing about everything. Apologizing to Turkey. 21 million dollars. For what? 1948, 1960, the entire West Bank, Jerusalem, Gaza Strip, the Golan Heights, it was all in Arab hands. What? Why was there no peace? Why did Egypt call to destroy the Jewish state and kill all the Jews in 1966? 
For what reason? What were they missing? And then the facts of history. The green line, there is no green line. That was the 1948 armistice line where the Arabs stopped attacking the Jews. Not the Palestinians, the Arab countries. It wasn't Palestine. 1948, when the war ended, Jordan had the West Bank, Jerusalem. Gaza was in, in Egypt control, and Syria wasn't, wasn't, well, had the skull and heights. There was no, green line was with the Palestinians. So in 1960, Egypt called to destroy the Jews. Jordan joined the war. They lost the war. Israel um, liberated these areas. Why do I say liberated? Because Jews were free to go there now. I shouldn't say that. Israel upholds a ridiculous, racist, I would call it anti-Semitic rule that Jews aren't allowed to pray on the Temple Mount. What is going on here? What in God's name is going on here? We have a huge problem in Israel. No one is getting up and talking the truth. It is so frustrating. A 13-year-old little girl is stabbed in her sleep tens of times. And people talk about diplomacy. People talk about land. People talk about politics. Is there anything in those words that can, that can explain or justify or understand how anybody can walk into a home and stab a 13-year-old girl while she sleeps tens of times? What is wrong with people? I, I, I'm so frustrated with this. It's just, it's totally beyond logic. And I don't know how to explain it because if it was the rest of the world, I could say it's anti-Semitism. But inside Israel, we have the liberal movement to talk about occupation and leftists and everyone. I just don't understand them. In the best case scenario, these people are extremely mixed up and ignorant. In the worst case scenario, they're just simply evil. They have some psychological bug which, which pushes them to side with the murderers. I, I don't know. Maybe it's like a national Stockholm syndrome or something. I don't understand it. Only one thing to say, Americana was right. It's time to wake up. So, Richard, you know, Mary, you say, Evans, Americana was right. You got to read his books. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not a conist in terms of, you know, what people think. But read his books. It's not just about waving a flag and screaming, kill it. He didn't say kill everyone. I'm not going into that right now. But we got to stop doing what we're doing. What we're doing is not working. You got to stop apologizing. You got to stop making believe that we're guilty of something. Paying Turkey $21 million for stopping a boat that was filled with weapons to come to Gaza? Because we're trying to control the, the import of weapons, of missiles? The world's still giving aid to, to, to Gaza? $1 billion was used to to dig tunnels? Over 10,000 missiles were shot at, at, at cities in Israel? I, I don't understand. And, and Israel's the problem? We're the problem? You know, people talk about, oh, how Israel bombed Gaza and how Israel does this and checkpoints and all this stuff. That, that's right. Those are called reactions. You can't judge a reaction until you know what caused it. Right? If you want to, you want to, you want to ignore the, you want to ignore why it happened. So you can blame the Allies for bombing the heck out of Berlin. Right? You want to talk about the British, England, and Dresden? I mean, you're not gonna, if you're not going to talk about why things happen, you're just going to look at the reaction of things. Well, then, you know, you might as well let out everyone out of jail. That's so terrible. They're behind bars. Don't worry about the crimes. Just let them out because it's terrible how they're living. Israel always reacts. We don't initiate. We don't like war. We don't want war. We have 420 million Muslims around the Middle East who want us dead. We have 6 million Jews in Israel. You think we want war? We don't want war. But we just have to stop apologizing. There's no reason why Jews can't go up to Harabai, to the Temple Mount and pray. Why is Israel upholding that law? How dare Israel uphold that law? Why are we apologizing to people who are violent and want to, and want to kill us? How could you give the city of Hebron up? And I'm, I'm sorry to say, I know it was a deal, a done deal, I understand that, but that was during Netanyahu's reign. And unfortunately, we don't have many leaders right now in the Knesset who are, who are, who are willing to stop apologizing. It just has to stop. So I've been called all kinds of names online, and that's fine. I'm not, I'm not really, uh, you know, offended by these people who call names. You want to argue with, with points and, and logic, you know, I'll argue and debate whoever you like. It's not a problem. You want to call names? doesn't offend me. But let's talk about the name calling for one second. I'm a fanatic? Really? I'm advocating keeping Jews in their homes and protecting the state of Israel against Islamic terror? You're advocating kicking them out of their homes and giving the land over to those same terrorists who are killing the Jews? And you're a peace activist? I'm a fanatic? Really? Really? When and how did that happen? 
When would someone who's advocating kicking Jews out of their homes as a key for peace? If Jews aren't there, we'll have peace. When did that come? When did that become something normal? When did the idea of kicking Jews out of their homes and giving the area over to those who are murdering Jews become a peace activist? And someone who's advocating keeping Jews in their homes and giving them protection become the fanatic person? I don't understand the left. I don't understand them. I don't. I have no explanation for people who advocate this kind of stuff. It doesn't make sense. It's totally and completely ludicrous. It's, it's, it's like suicide. It's, it's self-mutilation. Why is it that we have to apologize? What has Israel ever done that we need to apologize? Ellie, you say these leftists are dangerous. I don't understand them. I would love to have someone on my feet, and there are some who argue with me and debate with me, and I've said this several times, and they go, oh, call me names. Explain yourself. Why would you advocate kicking Jews out of their homes, giving the land over to those who are murdering the Jews, and call it a peace process? What is peaceful about that? And people say that I'm aggressive. I'm aggressive. You're advocating uprooting Jews and giving the houses over to radical Muslims. I'm advocating keeping them in, and I'm the aggressive one? You don't like the way I react angrily? Well, I'm sorry. How about not advocating kicking me and my family and my friends out of their homes and handing over to terrorists? And I guess I won't have to react angrily. How am I the... It's just... It's, it's unbelievable. I, I don't have an explanation for it. And it's frustrating beyond belief. And the way that people react to terrorism is... is um, I, I'm sorry. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I'm going to give you a very painful example. And hopefully next week on Israel News Talk Radio, I'm going to have him on live to do an interview with him. 23 years ago, I lost a very dear friend who was in the army with me. He was, he was kidnapped and killed by Islamic terrorists who dressed up like religious Jews. There were four terrorists in the car. And they threw him off like a piece of meat off the Jerusalem Tel Aviv Highway. We did find him. And it was a very painful experience, obviously. Um, and uh, we caught the terrorists. And we put them in jail. And a couple of years later, when we made deals with the terrorists themselves and let out over a thousand terrorists, blood on their hand terrorists, to get a soldier out of jail, to get a soldier out of captivity. And again, I'm very happy Gil actually his home. It has nothing to do with him. It has nothing to do with him. All four of Yoshua Friedberg's murderers were let out of jail. And we thought we were peaceful. We were, we were doing something right. We're Gil I'm happy Gil actually his home. Don't go there. All four murderers. Two out of the four of them have already murdered again. Again, terrorism. So is that morality? Was that moral? The blood is uh, dripping on whoever let those terrorists hands. That's whose, blood, that's whose hands the blood is on. The terrorists do what they do. Uh, the people expect them to do something differently are the, are, the, are, the, are, the, are the problem here. Today I was told someone what happened and responded, it's very sad, but she should not have been there. Israel shouldn't be there. It made me sick. But uh, I understand, this is empty. That is, that is the source of evil. Again, it would be like saying, you know, the girl, uh, people say, the girl should not be wearing a shorter skirt, you get raped. It, it's the source of evil. No, uh, yeah, that's true. I'm saying it's nothing to do with him. I'm happy he's home. The price itself is not something that should be done. Soldiers put themselves in, and again, I'm talking to someone who's in uniform uh, often, soldiers put themselves in the line of danger. This is their duty. This is their job. And there's no excuse to letting terrorists out of jail. And again, 85%, I believe the last statistic was 85% of terrorists that were let out of jail went back to terrorism. So everybody was murdered by those, these, these free terrorists. Um, the blood is on the people who let them go. I, 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 I'm sorry. It's not on that. The, the terrorists are the murderers. And you want to go back to the soldier who killed the terrorist in Hebron? Uh, we'll go back to the terrorist. No problem. He killed a terrorist. I don't care what he felt if he was angry. For God's sake, of course he was angry. He killed a terrorist. And he said that he thought he was in danger. Believe him. Don't believe him. I don't care. We saw what happened in Turkey. They shot the terrorist down. He was injured. They did not take him out. And he blew up. Is this a reality that we don't know? Is it a reality that never happens? So you want to debate whether the soldier was really in danger or not? He killed a terrorist who came to murder Jews and soldiers, and IDF soldiers. 
what in God's name is the moral debate about here? We are not going into areas and taking out people. We're talking about a terrorist who came to us and attacked. And the most, the most, the, the biggest irony here is the Minister of Defense at the time gives his own witness where he was in an operation and he took out terrorists after they were down. I'm okay with it, by the way. Muslim Palestinian friends where I live and we've got a great religion, even they know that I'm Zionist. And I'm about the leftists, they are so brainwashed that I never get to relate. So Tiago Blumfeld, Safran, I have friends from the neighboring Arab villages where I live as well, but they don't call themselves Palestinians and I don't call them Palestinians because the name Palestinian is a fabricated national claim that is being used by the Arabs to justify fighting wars against Israel as well as murdering Jews. The reason this girl was murdered was because they feel that they have a national right to the city of Hebron, where, of course, King David originally made his, his, um, his king, kingdom there. And before that, we have the cave of the patriarchs with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov are buried there. And the Muslims are connected to Avram, but they're not connected to the Yitzhak and Yaakov at all. There's no other excuse to the evil. Uh, we must unite. So, Zia, I really do appreciate you being here. I do. You, you have no clue. People like you and people like, you know, Farhana and people like Muhammad Zawabi, it's, it's you people who, who, not give me hope, it's you people who are the sign of peace. It's you people who understand that, that this is not about or against Muslims. This is about radical Islamic terrorism and you and I are on the same side here because the, the number of Muslims murdered in the Middle East by Islamic terrorism is astronomical. But the problem is the world, including the Muslims of the South, point a bigger finger at Israel over the conflict that's going on here, then they point the finger at Assad, who killed 350,000 Muslims. Or ISIS. Right? ISIS, oh, it's Israeli. Yeah, sure. I, I'm not going to go there today. But a little girl, hello, Yafa, 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 the night before I finished her graduation in dance school, sleeping, dreaming, murdered in her sleep by an Islamic terrorist. Why? Because of politics, because of land, because of diplomacy. If you believe that, you are immoral. You are, the, you are the most immoral, evil person that can possibly be. There is no excuse. There's no morality. There's no... I can't even fathom the idea of someone saying, what is she doing there? What does that mean, what is she doing there? The victim is the problem? It's just truly unbelievable. So I got another two weeks here. I'm also going to the West Coast, and I'll be in Canada. Uh, also be in other areas of the United States. I'm talking about Israel, and of course about standing together. Um, and I just heard the news this this morning. I'm mean, this morning in the middle of the night, and I just could not sleep. I was actually in the middle of writing a post on. Um, <clears throat> I was in the middle of writing a blog post on on Hanin Zuabi and the flotilla, and this came in, um, and it, it's just you know no words. No words. I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand. I'm asking anyone here, if you are on the left side of the political spectrum, please explain yourself. I would love to have you on live. Explain yourself. Why are you advocating making deals with these people? Don't ask me what, my, what, what, what options I have. Don't t ask me, well, what's my alternative? The fact that I may not or may have an alternative is no excuse for you cutting off limbs. I say all the time, guys born into the hospital, the doctors don't know what's wrong with him, so they start cutting off limbs, and I says, what are you doing? And the doctors look at him and say, well, what's your alternative? He says, I don't know what he's got, but stop cutting off limbs. The fact that we don't know how to deal with this issue does not mean you should have to start kicking Jews out of their homes and giving land over to those who are trying to murder us. Um, Tiago, it's not a, a right-winded government. It's not the problem. It's a whole mindset. It's the whole mindset. Defining the problem as a political problem is a problem in itself. This is not a political problem. This is an Islamic, radical Islamic terror problem. That is the problem here. It's not about land. It's not about politics. It's about fabrication of history and the use of those lies to justify murder. It has nothing to do with politics. And I, I just simply had enough. I don't understand. I don't understand it. How and why does anyone advocate kicking Jews out of their homes and handing the land over to those who are murdering Jews because they promise peace. I, I don't understand it. I don't begin to understand it. I would love for someone to explain it to me. How could you possibly say 
that you love Israel. How could you possibly believe that you believe Israel is your home? And in the same sentence, say, I believe that Jews should be kicked out of their homes and the Arabs should be given over to the Arabs. Based on what? Based on what? They fabricate history with a national Palestinian claim and they use that claim to justify wars and terrorism and you accept it? And there are the people who say, I don't accept it. It's just what we have today. What we have today is Islamic terrorism. What we have today is a little girl who stabbed 30 times in her sleep. That's what we have today. We don't have a political problem. For God's sake, stop it. I I'm so frustrated. And no one in the Israeli Knesset today gets up and screams this. That, you know, you, no one gets up and says to the... You know, again, when I had a debate with someone, I said, all right, you think you, you think you have peaceful friends? No problem. Walk into the old city of Jerusalem. Take the first, you know, person you meet, the first Muslim you meet, and ask them. Look them right in the face and say, why did you build a mosque on my Temple Mount? Just ask him for an answer. See what he says. Walk over to the first person you see and say to them, when did you have a country called Palestine? In what year did Israel occupy it from you? 48? Sorry, it was British mandate of Palestine before. And in 48, we didn't occupy anything. Jordan had the West Bank, and Aza was in Egypt, and Syria had the Golan Heights. It wasn't Israel. 67, you weren't involved in the world, Palestinians. The areas were governed by different Arab countries. Is the, is the truth so, so hidden that people don't see it? I, I'm so frustrated with the lack of truth in the world. I cannot... I don't even understand it, and I don't understand why no one in the Knesset is getting up and saying this out loud. Why are we apologizing? Why are we giving Turkey $21 million for sending a ship to try to break the military control over the stoppage of import of weapons into Gaza? What do we owe them? I mean, for God's sake, we should be suing them for the, for the soldiers. And the guys in Shayetit now, the guys in the commander unit are now petitioning the high courts to stop this. But they will not succeed because the high court is well in Israel, unfortunately, is controlled by these liberal ideas. Oh my God. Where is the outcry from the moderate Muslim leadership? Which I do not believe exists. Moderate Muslims, yes. Leadership, no. Where is it? Can you imagine if a Jew would do this? Where is, what Israel would be doing, bending over backwards, rightfully so to... to, to to condemn such a hideous act of terrorism? Where is the Islamic leadership that's bending over forwards or backwards, not even moving, just saying that won't call him a shaheed? How's that sound? How about not calling him a martyr? We'll start with that. Don't tell me you condemn. I don't want you to condemn the condemnation. We know Arafat condemned, we know Abu, Ma Abu Mazen condemns with one, in, in one day, and then he says he, he, um, he blesses all the pure blood that's spilled in Jerusalem of Jews who want to pray on the the Temple Mount in the other day. I don't care about your condemnations. I want to see actions. Abu Mazen honored people. Honored these, these murderers. Honored them. It, it's just, stop. $21 million is a tiny price to pay to reinstate relationship. I don't care about the actual history of the relationship. Future global relationship is more important. Jonathan Hauser, I understand that and I appreciate that. There are things that are more important than money. There are things that are more important than money, like the lives of soldiers like terrorism. You cannot give in to this. I don't, maybe you know better than me, but I would love to know, I would love to know what exactly Turkey's giving you, or us. We're paying $21 million who sent a terrorist cruise over to Israel to arm terrorists who want to kill us. $21 million is money that we don't have. Why are we giving it away? Let's put one more drug on the, on the, on the, on the medical insurance where people don't have to die in Israel. Let's fund the, the, the orphans of the IDF. Let's fund some more gear for soldiers. Giving $21 million to Turkey, who has been sliding down that road of radical Islam over the last couple of years, is not normal. A price to pay, we're not talking about a price. I know you mean well, and I'm not coming at you personally. But there's, there's, there are things that are more important than business. And I know you believe that as well. You may be right about 21 million, but there's a bigger picture at play. I don't like the part about the deal, but I realize that there is like we don't know about the deal, detail of the deal. Even Smutridge, even Smutridge, I'll have to see what the next line is. Again, I, I don't care. 
either publish it or don't. I don't care. I, I'm sorry. It, it, we, we, we've had this saying. I don't think you can say he wants to reward terrorists in any way. Or, or, that's what I'm saying. I don't understand. We're paying a country that sent a boat that almost murdered three soldiers. What are we? Are we? Are we bribing them? Are, are we giving it to black? That's called blackmail, right? Well, we'll give them twenty-one million dollars, and what? What? We'll fix a relationship that they started to destroy. What is it? Protection money? Why are we going down this road? Why are we going down this road? And why is it that we agree to open up some kind of whatever it is in Gaza, and we don't demand the return of our two boys, Golden and Shaul, who are still in Gaza somewhere? Who knows where they're buried? If they're, I don't, they're presumed dead. What is wrong with us? Let's turn the tables. Would the Muslims ever agree to such, a, such an agreement? Why do they care about... I don't want to say that even. I'm not even going to say it. It can't happen. It's got to stop. What does Turkey have to do with Aza? Uh, well, only the fact that they demanded Israel with this deal to open up, uh, to loosen up the blockage. <laughs> that's exactly... Jonathan, that's exactly the point. One of the... Uh, um, I, I agree with you, and one of the that's exactly the point. One of the first Turkey made is that Israel has to loosen the uh, the closure on Gaza, and that is exactly the point. If they are siding with the Hamas governed area in Gaza, and they're demanding stuff from Israel instead of condemning that, that shows where they stand. And there's no money in the world. There's no yeah, but yeah, but America is not asking us to pay the repercussions for a boat that they sent in to break a military closure to stop weapons. Um, the U.S. is actually giving us money, which again is a whole other show, which I, we have to figure out how to get off that money, but that's a whole different a whole different discussion. You can make demands, but they're not demanding repercussions and money back for damages that was caused because they sent the boat to cut, I mean, Jonathan, it's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. I, I'm beyond frustrated. I'm sad. This, this poor family, 13-year-old girl, who had a recital the night before her finished recital for dance school, stabbed tens of times in her sleep. And people still talk about a political process. People still talk about diplomacy or land. I will tell you, we need new, we need we need new leaders. That's where it, where it comes down to. We need new leaders. We need, we need to re, we need to re-educate the country. I, I mean, I, it's it's we have a whole generation that's brought up thinking that we actually took something from the Palestinians. Thirteen-year-old girl stabbed tens of times in her sleep. It's unbelievable. I wouldn't give her only one dime. He's not to be trusted. He wants the big empire back. I I don't understand. I don't understand it, Tanyo, and I'm not that important enough for him to come on my feet and let me know or email me, and I don't expect him to. But you know what? Netanyahu is one man, and it's the nation. It's the nation. We have to figure out how to get the truth out to the nation again. Mm -hmm. Since the Oslo Accords, the entire nation has been educated like we owe something to these people who have been terrorizing and justifying the murder of Jews and fighting wars against Israel. It's just... It's just I speak, I, mean, I try to speak I, I, truth and, you know, just take Temple Mount for an example, Temple Mount. Jews can't pray on Temple Mount except it's no problem, no problem. Can you imagine if, if Israel say, <laughs> yeah, Arabs can't pray, it, it's just, I don't know, we, we, it's, it, this is, we can't blame this one on God or on the enemies of people. Ali, Netanyahu is the better of the worst here in Israel, there's no question in my mind, he's an unbelievable statesman. This past deal is something that I cannot excuse. I, I, I don't understand it. Um, no, Sharon, uh, Sharon, no, not at all. Not at all. Attacking turkeys is, is another sect of radical Islamic terrorism. It's very, very clear. Turkey is not yet down that radical Islamic way of life yet. They're still more or less a westernized country still, and ISIS will have their heads. Again, ISIS would have, ISIS would have Hamas heads as well. You know, Hamas Hamas is considered like a reform Lavdil, would be considered non-traditional Muslims according to them. So it's it's not, no. But what we can learn from the Turkey attack is that they took out the terrorist who's lying on the floor injured, and instead of putting a bullet in his head, they let him lie there to be arrested, and he blew himself up and he killed more people. There were three explosions. One was inside where the guy was shot. One was outside the car outside was waiting for people who were running away, and one was upstairs, people were running upstairs, and then this was a calculated murder 
on religious belief. Anyway, people, I got an event tonight in Great Neck, and uh, I'm off to Canada for Shabbat. Got a couple of speaking events there, and um, and then I'm uh, after Canada, I'm off to LA and back to the states for another couple of meetings. And you know, for those of you who are here, uh, for those of you who don't know, I run an organization called Standing Together, and we supply and support IDF soldiers with everything from personal gear to refreshments when we drive out to their bases. You know, these are the guys and the women and men who are facing the, the terrorism, day in and day out. Esav, Sonei Yisrael is interesting. Eliezer, Esav, Yishmael, Esav, I'm not sure who they are. Um, yeah, I, I don't understand why they talk about PC. I don't get it. I, I'm not, you know, I don't know. The truth is just, I, I'm hoping that if the truth gets out by enough people, everyone watching this, you share this and... You talk about it. You get the facts down. You talk about the facts. You tell people. I hope the the sane, moral people in the world will. Um, Ricky, it's twenty four seven idf dot org. I hope the sane people in the world will, will listen and, and, and get the facts. I, I'm just so frustrated with this. Why, why does the world? Why? Why? Why are they choosing to believe this? Why? Forget the world. Why are the leftists choosing to believe this? Why? Anyway, people, I'm signing off. I uh, have a nice, huge event tonight. Hopefully, we'll have some good um, results from that. Um, thank you, Ricky. 247idf.org is right there. You want to join any one of our campaigns? We certainly are relying on people who are watching this for sponsoring the campaigns and donating. Um, people, just, just, just don't be scared to tell the truth. Stand up on those hind legs and, and, and roar. And don't give in. Don't give in. For for the sake of of, of Halal Yaffa, who just was murdered in her bed by, by a radical Muslim terrorist, don't give in. Don't give in. Stop being scared. Stop being apologetic. We're the good guys here. We're always the good guys. All right, people, I'm signing off and hope to give you a live feed a little later on from where I'm doing the event. And we should have happier things to talk about. I'm just asking, I'm begging everyone here, don't give in, and don't be shy. It's your shyness that they're, they're, they're depending on. It's their shyness that is their life, their lifeboat. We are shy, we don't talk up. They call us names and we keep quiet because we're scared of professionally. We're scared, you know, whatever it is, friendships are going to lose. Stop. This is our lives, this is morality. I always tell people all the time, when I told my students, I say, um, a, a hero is someone who does the right thing, even though it's very difficult. That's what a hero is. It has nothing to do with supernatural powers. A hero is someone who does the right thing, even though it's very difficult. So be a hero, people. Be a hero. Stand up for what's right. Tell people the truth and help fight for Israel's right to defend themselves. And let's stop giving to these terrorists. And remember, I'm upset, but in no way am I giving up. There's no reason, there's no excuse to have to be in despair. This is not disparity. Israel is a blossoming, beautiful country with our culture that is stunning from high tech to medical advances to, to scientific to mathematical advances to security advances. Beautiful, stunning, blossoming country that we are, uh, there's no question in my mind that Israel is the prophecy of the land blooming. There's no question in my mind that we are in Tchat of the Geula, we are, we are the beginning stages of the of the Mashiach, of, of um, the Geula. There's no question in my mind. And I think that a lot of it is in our responsibility now. We have, to take, we have to take responsibility and we have to stand up for what's right. So that's where we're at. I'm still, you know, thinking about this girl and the pictures that we saw online bring you right back uh, to the Itamar massacre when other Islamic terrorists slaughtered a full family in their beds. It's the same story again. Thank God the first alert team got there. Uh, in time to take the terrorist out. But again, it's our responsibility. The terrorists are doing what they believe in. If we don't start doing what we believe in, this is going to happen again and again and again. We have to start believing in our, in our, in our right, the fact that we are right. And stop giving in and apologizing to these, these evil forces, these, this radical Islamic evil force. 
All right, people, I'm signing off. Have a great day, and hopefully be on you know, another time with more positive uh, thoughts. And um, may Hallelujah, may your memory be blessed and a lesson for all of us, and may God avenge your blood. I saw you know, a reaction to that on Facebook today. Why do people be God avenge your blood? I don't want revenge. Really? Something's wrong with that person. I'm sorry. I'm not going to mention their name. Really? God's sake. Yes, I want God to avenge your blood. I want, I want Kadesh Baruch Hu to God to help us and destroy all those who are seeking our destruction. To destroy them. We say, we say we hope people come back. We're not talking about those who want to destroy us. Yeah, the Vaidei should change their ways. But I'm not waiting for that. Of course there are good people, Jennifer. Of course there are good people. No one, no one said anything differently. You never heard anything different from me. Of course there are good Arabs and Muslims and Christians. There are, all people, all people, there are good people all over the place. That's not what we're discussing. That's not the issue here. All right, people. I got to sign off. Got to get going. Got a lot of things to do today. We'll be back with a little positive, more, a more positive feed a little bit later on. Have a great day, everyone, and peace.